Chuffa, 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 chuffa. It's not a model train. It's a high voltage igniter. It looks like a model train. All it needs is the wheels. This is a device that is designed to take mains voltage in, and it's got six terminals in the output, and based on just observation and knowing that many of these things contain multiple bobbin transformers like this, I'm going to guess that it's got three of these inside, and that these are diagonally connected, and each pair is high voltage. Now, there are other configurations of this module available. Uh, you can get versions that have an earth, and I presume that goes onto the chassis, and then there'll be sort of one tap off per winding. And I think that's for use in, say, cooker igniters, where you've got the uh, you've got the general ground of the cooker, and then you get the little ceramic insulator and the electrodes sticking up that sparks onto ground. However, let us investigate the wiring of this. So I shall turn this on, and I'm going to guess these are usually around about one thousand ohms. Not always. Sometimes they're higher. Sometimes they're lower. But my guess is that these will have continuity. Uh, 780 ohms. Anything between these? Nope. This should have continuity. 700 and... 74, I'm not good enough. Uh, any continuity between here? Nope. It is diagonal connections. Any reference between any of these to the main side? No. So roughly 800 ohms uh, per coil. And my guess is, before I open this, and I'm hoping it's not completely potted in resin, I'm pretty sure there'll be some. My guess is that it contains the multiple of these with a common core through the middle and a, a single winding energising them all together. Because if it's anything like standard gas and cooker igniters, it'll be spark, 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 and they'll all flash in sync. All the sparks will jump in sync. So what I'm going to do right now is, I was hoping to actually put little speed terminals in these, but I'm going to have to solder wires on. I'm going to solder wires across and then uh, cut them so there's a wee spark gap. And then I'm going to hook the mains up to this and we'll see what happens. One moment, please. I have soldered some more links across these. I'm about to cut them uh, on what I think is going to be the right spark gap. Not really sure. I'm going to make it 5mm. I think that's reasonable enough, isn't it? And when I power this up, uh, aside from the fact it might just go bang if it's uh, some random unmarked stuff. What is this thing? Is this labelled at all? Oh, it does say 220 to 240 volt. That's good. Uh, this thing could be quite noisy. I'll warn you in advance, because sometimes when you get sharp, popping, sparking noises, the uh, microphone in the phone just tries to compensate, or doesn't compensate in time, and it gets very loud. Right, I'm going to bring the hoppy in to see if I can get any indication of power consumption. I'm not expecting it to be too high. So here is the hoppy. So I shall power that up, make sure this is solid and not going to slither about. Uh, this is where it could get very loud. Just be cautious if you get headphones on, I might pull them away from your ears a little bit. Are you ready? Let's try it. It's not too bad, is it? Is it too bad? Power consumption is 1.6 watts. Uh, I'm going to uh, take the exposure off. Hold on. Let's see if we can actually see anything. Oh, it's a very thin spark, but it is there. I'll tell you what, I'll zoom down it. You're just going to get uh, loud, loud noises here. Yeah, little thin sparks. Okay, that's reasonable enough. Right. Let's investigate further. Watch your eyes. The light is about to come back. The light is back. I shall unplug this. I don't think I can get shock off that. No, you can't. Okay, well, that's useful. It could theoretically have a charge that could suddenly discharge through the little pulse transformer. I'm going to put the cap in this before I spill it. When I got back from Ember, one of these bottles was tipped over. I think it was this one. And uh, the uh, flux and isopropanol had leaked out and made a huge mess. Now, are we going to get lucky in this? So I'm going to cut these bars off because I don't need these now. It has proven its function. Let's get them out the way. Am I going to have any joy in here at all, or is it all going to be potted in resin? 
and one end's not potted in resin. Ah, so the high voltage section is potted in resin. I'd expect that. Is this partially potted in resin? Uh, there's two connections here that are feeding the uh, coil that's going to be in the common uh, ferrite core that's down the middle of those. So these will be in there. That's the ferrite core. That Those will be feeding the coil around one end of that. I don't know if it will spiral right away along or not. Uh, now, can I get this circuit board out? It will be soldered onto these terminals, which may be put in from the top. I may have to get destructive here. I will get destructive. I mean, I got this to take to bits. Where are my side cutters? Where are my side cutters? Oh, there are. Let's nibble nibble. And destroy. This is where you will definitely get clicks and pops. It can get loud at times. Is it potted in resin? I hope not. It will make it so much easier if it's not potted in resin. I don't think it is, unless there's resin at the bottom sneakily hiding out of sight. It's not uncommon for it to be partially dipped. Uh, oh, there is resin in there, but it's just enough to hold it in place. Right, tell you what, I'm going to try and crack this out, desolder this, get the circuit board out, and then we'll reverse engineer it, because I can already see just a smasher components and a capacitor. That makes me think it's going to be a resistor. Limits the current in and possibly SIDAC uh, to actually trigger it. Right, one moment please. Reverse engineering is complete. Didn't take too long. The most complicated bit was peering away some of the resin off this to try and show what's inside here. So this does have these multi-section bobbins in it. You can see the ferrite core coming up the middle here, and then it's got three of these inside and the reason they've got multiple sections is because these are high voltage transformers and by having multiple sections well let's just zoom down a little tad that's better by having multiple sections it means the voltage across each winding is lower so it, say for instance if this is rated 5000 volts it will be 1000 volts then it will jump across the next section of the bobbin 1000 volts and that means whereas in the past that they tried to make half voltage transformers by just winding them backwards and forwards over each other it used to result in insulation breakdown this just keeps the voltage across the windings much lower and that is what they've used in here so the circuitry and i will zoom out just a tiny little bit for this the circuitry looks like this we have two resistors uh, 5.1k, a diode for the basically very simple half-wave rectification, a capacitor is charged up through the coil, and then we've got a SIDAC across it. I shall explain what a SIDAC is. In fact, I shall bring in the schematic. I shall move this out of the way. Here is the schematic. Let's zoom in a little bit further. So the AC comes in, and it goes through these current limiting resistors. They're only seeing half wave. I should have calculated their dissipation, but it is not designed for continuous operation. You know, I kind of want to know the dissipation of this now. One moment, please. Okay, very rough figure, 2.88 watts. I think these are one watt metal film resistors. In reality, as this capacitor here charges up, the uh, voltage across those resistors will drop uh, notably. So, uh, There'll, there'll be a peak of current and then it'll sort of like go down. Uh, so it's probably not 2.88 watts. They probably are operating in their range. So maybe it is rated for continuous operation. Not that I think they'd use it like that. But the two resistors limit the current into the circuit. They've used two just to spread dissipation. Also increases the sort of voltage rating because there's only half the voltage dissipated across each resistor. There is a 1N4007 diode. Very classic. Uh, Standard diode, not a high speed one, just regular one. Uh, the 4007, that means it's rated 1000 volts. It's just the top of the range of that voltage. Of that. It's the highest voltage of the 1N4 double O range. So the rectified, half wave rectified current charges this capacitor here, which is 2.2 microfarad, 250 volt. It doesn't have to be more than 250 volt because it's never going to reach 250 volts in normal circumstances. That is in series with the primary winding, which is here, that is wrapped around that ferrite core. It's worth mentioning that uh, this is an extremely low resistance. It's just a very small number of turns. I couldn't even measure the resistance. It was so low. Um, but the voltage uh, increases in that capacitor, puts a charge onto it. 
um, until it reaches 220 volts. And then this SIDAC, and I've written SIDAC and the number next to it because I took it off the circuit board and then put it back on again uh, just to get the number K2200G, very standard. This is a 220 volt SIDAC. It's a bi directional diode that when it reaches its threshold voltage of approximately 220 volts, it suddenly clamps like a thyristor and shunts it or a track. Uh, it's a very simple way of getting a sudden high current spike. So in this case, the capacitor charging through the coil, then when it reaches the threshold, this will suddenly shunt and that will dump all the energy suddenly from the capacitor through that very small number of turns and that will induce a magnetic field in the core which then creates the uh, high voltage through the high turn ratio of the secondary to create the sparks. There is another component which I've not written the value on. It's quite a high value, 6.8 megohm. That is why when I initially demonstrated this, I said sometimes it can suddenly give off a spark unexpectedly. Without this resistor, that capacitor could charge just to the point of the threshold that it might be about to trigger this, but not quite triggering it. And what you can do is uh, sometimes you can disconnect it and it will uh, then trigger and it will suddenly make, it will dump the capacitor and spark. They used to happen with little xenon strobes quite a lot. Um, and that is it. The SIDAC is the most interesting thing here. It is a standard component. You can get it from Mauser, uh, but you can also get it from AliExpress. The Mauser ones are probably compliant with uh, the specifications. The ones from AliExpress are going to be unpredictable. But that's it. Resistor, died for halfway rectification, charge the capacitor via the coil. Uh, when it reaches the threshold voltage, bang, this thing fires, shunts the uh, capacitor so there's a huge burst of current as it discharges through this coil which is in series and that's what induces the current that uh, results in uh, the spark in the secondary very simple it's a very common type of circuit the earlier ones used to use triacs and uh, trigger circuits or thyristors and trigger circuits uh, sometimes triacs sometimes thyristors some used it fired in each half wave and uh, the other ones the thyristor ones would do things like you'd have a Standard thyristor would charge up in one half wave and then suddenly trigger the thyristor in the other. But this is a nice, simple, well, it's a, a two-lead component that does everything. Very simple. So that's quite interesting. It's pretty much what I expected. There was resin in the base here, but I think it's just leakage that had drizzled over there. It wasn't actually gluing any of the components in, which is good. It made it much easier to get out. Basically, just unsoldering the contacts. Let me lift that circuit board out. Uh, also worthy of note, the pattern that is um, pitted into the moulding. They've just basically, it looks like they've taken a burr and just chaffed inside the uh, moulding here. And that is to grip onto the, um, onto the resin to stop it just popping out. But that's it. Very interesting, very simple circuit. Exactly as expected and available now off AliExpress or eBay or whatever. At fairly low price if you want uh, high voltage sparks for gas ignition.